All right. Um, you've probably already done this in class, but if you haven't, let me give you uh, a brief overview here. Uh, we're doing a new Mars task, and it's called Glasses. So this is a Mars. And uh, I don't know how old this one was. Um, it could have been last year, for all I know. But let me get you just kind of started, um, making sure that you see things in the way that you know them and not in a different way that you can't understand them. Um, so there are three different glasses, you know, like wine, you know, wine glasses or something like that. Um, and they're all measured in centimeters, so you're six centimeters tall, five, etc. So as long as you can picture what you're looking at here, this is essentially the diameter of whatever's up top here. So that is a circle. And that 5 is the diameter of it, so the radius would be half of it, et cetera. And we're measuring this height along with this height and stuff like that. So let's make sure we break these down so you know how to do them appropriately. Um, they give you formulas, and that's good. It's good that you can actually look at these and you can replicate it. You know, you can, you can use it in your own way, especially because there's one that we've never looked at, which is volume of a sphere. Uh, we also haven't looked at volume of a cone, but I sure do hope that you can get an understanding of what the volume of a cone is, because it's like the volume of a pyramid when you look at it in comparison to a prism. Um, and volume of a cylinder, I mean, you've seen it before. We, we said the volume of any prism is area of base times height. Well, here's the area of your base, and here's your height. So again, if we know volume as area of base times height, and your base is a circle, then the area of your base is pi r squared. So that's how they go straight into that. So again, make sure you get that understanding, and then I think you're kind of in the clear, especially when they tell you vol the bowl of glass one is cylindrical. It is a cylinder. Um, so that's a good start for you. Now this one here, uh, actually I actually didn't see this description before. That's why, that's mostly why I made this video, to make sure you knew what it looks like. Um, the bowl of glass two, so check this one out. Glass 2 is half cylinder and half hemisphere. It's a hemisphere is half a sphere. So I actually divide this into two shapes in a way. And if you remember the Mars task that we just did with the pool, uh, the pool isn't straight up some prism of any kind. It's multiple different kinds of prisms. So you have to divide it into different things. So with this one right here, I'm looking at two different objects. I'm looking at a cylinder on top like that. And then I'm looking at half of a sphere on the bottom. So if you think of a sphere, like a, like a 3D circle, I'm only taking half of it, just that bottom portion. So <clears throat> what you're going to do here is your total volume will equal the volume of the top portion, the cylinder, plus half the volume of the sphere that you have on bottom. So let's say that this was an entire sphere right well let's say this was an entire sphere right here. Take the volume of the sphere, then take half of that. I guess that'll make sense to you there. And this one's a cone. We've seen cones, I guess the well, we haven't really seen cones yet. But here's a cone facing this way. Okay. And just so this volume thing makes sense, I want to look at this one more time here. Look at a cylinder and look at a cone inside a cylinder like this cone right here. This cone fits inside the cylinder just like the prism pyramid example. Let me draw it down here. If I have a prism, well, let's do a rectangular prism. Sort of. And if I have a pyramid within it, like so, do, 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 and then it all like goes upward into here, okay? It's a pyramid that has that height. Remember, the volume of, if the volume of a prism is area of base times height, the volume of the pyramid is one-third area of base times height. It takes up exactly one-third of the volume of everything within the prism. The cone is the exact same way. So check this out right here. You have this formula, pi r squared h over 3, that looks really weird, right? But check this out. That is the same thing. Um, if volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, this is one-third pi r squared h. 
If the formula for the volume of a cylinder is area of base times height, then the cone will be exactly one-third that. Um, now, I know that I've written all over the place here, but this cone is one-third area of base times height. The important thing is just knowing what the area of the base is. In this case, it's pi r squared. Okay? So, same thing. You take the area of this circle, multiply it by the height. Now, the height is the thing you need to determine. The height's not 6, right? That's a slant height. The height is something that's made out of this triangle. And part of this um, understanding is knowing that this is um, a certain kind of triangle when you look at it in a 2D perspective. If this slant height here is 6, and this length, this diameter across is 6, you'd also you know, assume this is 6 as well. So when you're looking at this height, you're looking at this as an equilateral triangle, if you can. So again, this looks like an equilateral triangle, where these are all 6. And then you have to then work this by knowing the degrees here. It's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, all that. So you figure out what this height is here. So you do that to find out the volume of the cone as you work. Okay? And then there's a backside problem, which um, it's going to be perhaps, uh, perhaps a lot more difficult. But again, we did a Mars task together um, on volume. And I talked about how that worked. And hopefully that gave you a good gist of how these things work. I mean, these things aren't easy in that, I mean, they're solvable problems. They're things you've done. It's just that they're looked at in this different, like, real-world application, and not all of the words are present for you. Sometimes it requires somebody to break it down. Now, I gave you all the stuff, but they say, how do we take that stuff and do things with it? So that's really what you're going for here, and that's what that back problem really has. You know, it has some difficult issues with that. So uh, see if you can keep that in mind. Feel free to ask questions on this as you go. Uh, but again, you probably already did this in class, but if you didn't, this is the setup that we used for it.